What's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Thursday, June 2nd, 2022 date, about 7 to 1 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a, uh, looks like a 1.4 earthquake and in, into the area of Alaska, where we've been seeing quite a bit of activity ramping up here. Oh, over the last 12 hours or so, we're going to jump right into that and cover uh, the activity right off the bat here. Opening up the USGS map here shows the activity up in Alaska along the Aleutian Trench. Shown uh, quite a bit of significant movement almost along the entire section here of the Aleutian Trench itself. Of course, a subduction zone, a major subduction zone at that. North American and the Pacific Plate interaction here. Get some big earthquakes. Quite a bit of stress and slip rate accumulated uh, within a short amount, amount of time here in this region. Of course, last year we did see an eight-pointer in this area where the uh, uh, 5.1 struck earlier uh, this afternoon. But since then, we've had, uh, we've had a couple more earthquakes in the vicinity of this Aleutian Trench here. 5.1 at 42 kilometers. Note uh, some of these depths there. Look at that deep earthquake way up north. Of course, that's uh, into the mountains up around Denali. But uh, getting quite a bit of uh, somewhat deeper earthquake activity here into the subduction zone. Uh, for example, that 5.1 was 82 kilometers. Uh, the other 5.1 was 42. Uh, so overall, quite a bit of movement ramping up here in this region. That has been fairly quiet in terms of any large-scale movement recently. So aside from the activity last year, I'm talking about uh, within the past few weeks. So... Uh, things kind of kicking up a little bit in that region. Still watching this area around the northwestern and western portion of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It uh, hasn't really shown too much activity here. Uh, along the Mariana Trench, northward into the Japan and Kurokamchaka Trench. All looks quiet today. Nothing showing up in the 4.0 threshold or above. Over here along the western portion of the, the uh, Philippine Plate, the Philippine Trench. Got a couple fours, even had a five in the mix there. Some of that earthquake activity getting somewhat deep into the trench region. A little swarming uh, to take note there off the coast and into the Philippine Trench area. One earthquake over here around the Java Trench in the Indonesia Islands area, 4.5 at 60 kilometers. Somewhat deep in this area as well. Uh, Myanmar region did see a 4.2. No subsequent activity following yesterday's 5.9 there in the China region that uh, looks like it has completely disappeared off the map. Again, this originally came in as a 6.1, I believe, but uh, downgraded there to a 5.9. So no further aftershock sequences and not a whole lot of further westward pressure movement here uh, following that earthquake activity yesterday. Only a 4.0 in Afghanistan. And of course, no doubt there is some threes and twos throughout the Mediterranean region. Uh, that the EMSC shows and also listed on the Earthquake 3D globe, but uh, nothing really in the 4.0 range in that area. We did have a 4.9 off the coast of the uh, Morocco area, 10 kilometers into this region that we've been kind of seeing. Uh, well, I think it's been a little bit more than a than a week's time frame. Let me see if I can bring back the 30 days. Even then, that doesn't really pop up too much. We would have to check the EMSC model, but they're they're definitely been having a little bit of swarming here in the sea region off the coast of Morocco. 5.5 uh, looks to be the largest back uh, in late May in this area. So a couple other fours in the mix as well. Uh, into the Atlantic Ocean, seeing a little bit of activity around the Mid Atlantic. Popped up a 5.1 and a 4.9 today after a couple days of quiet activity. This earthquake down here in the South Georgia Island region, uh, kind of northwest of the South Sandwich Trench, the uh, the uh, this area right here where that seen an eight pointer last year. This earthquake struck well up here, uh, again around the South Georgia Island region at 10 kilometers for a 5.0. Uh, some activity stretching up into the South America region. Actually, you can follow a trail of activity. See that? Ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, ba bam, all the way up. Um, and I think we had some activity up here in the Gulf of California as well, although uh, USGS not showing it here. But overall, a couple fours. 
the magic number in this trail, this train of activity up and down the Peru Chile Trench and through the uh, Middle America Trench. Uh, California was shaken this morning from the 4.1 earthquake uh, in the Bay Area. It was felt pretty broadly. Uh, I appreciate all the did you or I appreciate all the felt reports that you guys uh, mentioned on the comments. It's good to take note and uh, use that for scientific value. Uh, it is in an area where there was a proposed CO2 injection site. Uh, not for sure if that ever went through or not, but some of these earthquakes are down there, 16 kilometers. Uh, the main one, the 4.1, uh, which is this one right here, struck down there at 18 kilometers. So some deeper earthquake activity well off the San Andreas Fault, well off the Calaveras and the Hayward Fault system. Uh, it was on the uh, Rio Vista Fault. It's not listed here on the map. I showed that in my previous update video. A uh, little couple segments going through this region that are pretty deep. Uh, in the fault department so uh, that would explain these uh, these deeper earthquakes that we've seen with uh, the 4.1 this morning uh, but I still think we need to watch it it's obviously inland it's well into the North American plate uh, an obvious sign of some some uh, I was gonna say springing uh, but some well I guess you could say that some winding of the spring here throughout the Bay Area and pressure uh, gradients for the most part here are kind of high so got to watch the Bay Area, uh, not necessarily San Andreas Fault, but still uh, it is capable of producing a large earthquake. 1906 was quite a ways away. Uh, let's see what else we got. Southern California kind of tapering off a little bit through the Ridgecrest area across the Hatchapi region. Looks like a, just a couple small microquakes down here in Southern California. Did note a little bit of migration here around the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault. I want to bring up the seven days all magnitudes here and we started to see a little bit of swarming here around Salton City it worked its way eastward yesterday and I seen this thing pop up earlier this afternoon and that is very close getting very close to the southern segment here of the San Andreas Fault that we don't see too much movement on but we see, start seeing some swarming uh, I mean this is pretty much looks like a mile a couple miles maybe a couple miles but if we start seeing this really kicking up in swarms, uh, I would hightail out of there. I'm not even joking because we don't want to see that thing blow. Uh, estimated mad, I shouldn't say blow, but um, come loose. Been well over 300 years or so uh, since the last major rupture here on the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault. 8.1 probable magnitudes. Could be greater, you never know. Time has definitely been building up and uh, winding up, so to speak, in terms of magnitude here. So, uh, gotta watch that pretty closely, but just one earthquake of 1.7, pretty shallow at one kilometer. Uh, that did take place very close uh, to the southern segment today. Watch for swarms. Uh, Nevada, some activity up around Mina and the Las Vegas area. Of course, this area has been seeing a little bit of some odd earthquake activity in the negative department, but overall general seismic activity uh, mellow for right now. No, no major swarms going on there in that region. Yellowstone National Park, quite as can be up here. Uh, Oregon had a little earthquake way outside of Bend, it looks like. This is kind of by the, uh, well, the Newberry Volcano, but it's outside of there. You can kind of see the volcano itself there. Paulina Lake and East Lake. Uh, this took place at 37 kilometers, whoo, way down there for a 0.4. Uh, Mount St. Helens, uh, got a, there's some activity taking place there, not a whole lot popping up. Um, Mount Rainier has a little bit of movement outside of the park. We'll check out the trimmer map here in just a little bit and the seismic uh, graphs. Not a whole lot going on throughout the eastern part of the country or the southern plains. Some earthquake activity winding down though around the area of Pecos, Texas, where we've seen a, a fairly large quake there. Um, what was it yesterday or the day before? Had a 4.6 and a 4.3. Things rocking and rolling out there in the oil fields. So, uh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and check out the uh, Yellowstone map here. Uh, and there's not a whole lot going on here, folks. I was just, uh, I was just looking at the Volcano Observatory 
uh, from the USGS, a hazard notification system, hands for short, right? Not a whole lot going on, no major GPS movement or ground deformation. Uh, there was only a couple, a handful of swarms, nothing significant. Uh, and this article was just put out yesterday. The volcano remains normal and green there at Yellowstone National Park. And of course, by a, a gentleman called uh, Michael Pollan, uh, the scientist in charge over there for the uh, Yellowstone area. I do appreciate his work. Uh, so yeah, let's go into the trimmer. This is today's activity. 209 epicenters of trimmer still continuing. Still got a little bit of trimmer kicking up here. Uh, check out over the last, uh, oh man, we can go back. Let's just go back to about that date here and see what we got. I know we had some and then there was days we had none. So I kind of want to get a general tally and location of where these, uh, uh, trimmers, trimmers were taking place here. Looking at 8,858 trimmers along the Cascadia. The majority of it here in Northern California. I mean, it doesn't, you have to really zoom in to get into the thousand range. But uh, yeah, there's a couple segments, sections here that really showed a lot of vibrational trimmer. It's a slow slip event type of, I can't say earthquake because earthquake is a sudden uh, jolt or release of pressure. This is more or less like trying to shove the uh, the plate down there into the subduction zone further at a slow rate which ultimately builds up strain and presser, pre pressure upstream here along the Cascadia so whenever we see major events like this always got me a little on my toes so watching that pretty closely almost 10,000 epicenters uh, in a period of uh, 30 days uh, let's go ahead and check out Mount St. Helens map here and we'll see what we got for a local seismic activity Remember, there was none shown on the map from the USGS or on the PNSN network. And bada boom, bada bang. Still got some activity kicking up here uh, over the course of the last couple hours. See these earthquakes? Check out the afternoon time frame. We do this every day, every morning, too, just because it's, it's active. Obviously, there's a lot of microquake activity kicking up at Mount St. Helens. What it all means, I don't think it means any volcanic eruption. I think it's subsidence. I'm going to show you here in a second. There's uh, this morning time frame, right? I'd say there's a lot more than zero earthquakes here on the map, folks. You guys see all that? So, GPS station is back up and running. They were down for about a week. I don't know what they were doing. This is Mount St. Helens here. These GPS uh, recording instruments are awesome because you can view pretty much any sites around the globe, around the world, around the flat map, however you want to look at it. And it gives you a lot of useful information if you want to know about general uplift um, at a volcano. Let's go ahead and check out Mount St. Helens. A lot of these stations are older within the vicinity. Uh, this one only goes back to about 2018. Uh, we can check this one nearby. This is a little bit more recent um and this is within that kind of within that swarming area right notice we're getting a little these are gra gradual trends here averages and it looks like we're having a little bit more we should be going down right if you really think about it we should be having like a downward trim trend uh, according to like averages uh well north this is northward movement but ground uh downward on the graph here and we're still kind of getting that just continuing here into 2022 with northward movement uh, far as uplift goes vertical displacement there's a downtrend still since about 2018 there's periods here seems like every I don't know like maybe 12 month periods where there's vertical uplift uh, measurements 2022 had it at the beginning but now notice a downward trend here so if we seen this thing kick up like this all of a sudden obviously we know something's going on underneath the ground but this is the raw data uh, and GPS stations here and it looks like it covers right up into this timestamp where we're at right now in this year so uh, I don't see any uh, vertical uplift displacement the only thing that I find odd is this is continual northward movement uh, that really hasn't uh, hasn't dropped down so uh, I'm not for sure what's going on with it but uh, We'll definitely keep an eye on it there for the northward movement and there's other gps stations that you can monitor here say you know 
down here at the southern end of it. This one looks like it only goes to about 2000, uh, I don't know if it covers 2022 or not, but there's a bunch of them, folks. They're all over the place. Some of them are current, some of them are not. Here's a, a station there just off the west side. Uh, there's a, a lot of people asking, what's up with this? Why is there sudden displacements, you know, from northeast, south, and, and a major vertical uplift? Those are actually due um, to different, something's changed on here, whether it's the model that they were using, the GPS model, or the antenna. So that's why we've seen that type of adjustment. Uh, there's not anything going on with the ground, but just uh, instruments being changed uh, or repositioned in terms of this. It looks odd, but uh, definitely not any type of a, um, a major ground adjustment, just instrument adjustment. And um, uh, 2022, about the same here. It's been pretty consistent. No major vertical uplift. There's the northward movement still, still kind of up there. Still kind of got a pretty good cluster of of, uh, of uh, data. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd throw that on there as well with the uh, earthquake activity that's just been continuing there. Obviously, see, quite a bit, quite a bit. All right, um, earthquakes Canada, jump off here shortly. I'm not gonna make this a super duper long update. A little bit of activity it looks like up in the. Uh, it's Alaska, Utah Territory region, 1.8 near the Beaver Creek area. That's about it. No major changes going on there on the southern end or the northern end of the Cascadia. Everything looks pretty uh, calm for now. Um, check out the EMSC model. Some activity kicking up again around the Middle America Trench, South America region. There's the twos and threes and whatnot. Pretty good cluster of them up and down the board. Solar weather activity is kind of on the quiet side for now. Uh, solar flux shows pretty minimal x-ray detection. Not a whole lot going on here, folks. It's been a while since we've had a uh, even an M-flare. This is last seven days. Looks like we had, uh, yeah, seven days of activity there wasn't uh, any in flares kicking up in there barely any sea flares over the last day here we're just uh mellowing out in the uh in the very low area b not a whole lot of geomagnetic storming coming up no major coronal holes sunspots kind of turning away from the earth side facing or facing the earth side Turning towards the western limb of the sun. Around the bend, nothing. No <laughs> nothing going on. What's going on here, sun? Come on. I want to see some action. I don't want to see blank sun. That's not good. We'll see what happens, folks. Uh, a couple, maybe a couple developments. I don't want to jinx it. <coughs> Way over there, out of view, but off on the southeastern limb of the sun. We'll see what comes of it in the coming days and weeks. Either way, let's get this thing going. Let's get some flares popping on the sun. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night. Stay safe. We will chat you guys sometime tomorrow, unless something major happens tonight. Uh, of course, we always try to upload uh, important updates when they happen, unless it's like at 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning. A lot of times I'm not up. But there's been times where I get up to get a drink, use the bathroom, check the computer, and sure enough, there's a big earthquake that just happened. So um, if I'm awake and there's something big going on, you can bet we'll do an update video here on this channel and get it out there to the, uh, the YouTube world. In the meantime, we'll chat you guys later. Have a beautiful night. We will uh, definitely uh, be kicking back here on the live stream a little bit tonight. All right, guys. Take care.